All right, this one is called Why Isekai Will Become the Most Popular Genre of Anime. And, I mean, if you look at the modern animes recently, it's just a bunch of shitty, min-maxed, uh, unfulfilling isekais pumped out each season, right? But even then, I feel like shonen anime still has such a big hold on the younger audience, and isekai is still not as popular as shonen, even proven with the charts of the videos that we saw recently from 2004 to 2024. Like, even Mushoku Tensei, like, didn't even get close to the top, right? Like, I didn't see Overlord, ReZero. Everything was just always just like the big, you know, battle shonen shit that kids like to watch. But hey, let's see what he has to say. Anime's genres are boundless, and it doesn't matter whether you're an insane jock or a degenerate or maybe not even a real person. There is a... I love the uh, love for Sam Select here. He's actually, I don't know, not sure if you guys know this guy. Crazy bodybuilder, dude. Also, I should probably change my face here. Boom. This guy loves anime. Huge bodybuilder. And <laughs> why is Connor, you see dog, just getting shit on for no reason? He's not even a real person. There is a genre for everyone. Many of yeah. these genres are praised and some are looked down upon. And I mean, really looked down upon. I feel like rom-com is better reflected than Mecha. Like, for sure, like, the battle shonens and just shonen jump shit is always popping off because, obviously, who has more time to sit and watch shit? Kids do, right? The biggest audience in any media, mostly, is kids and teenagers that are still in school, that don't have a fucking job or a family or different, different responsibilities, right? Mecha, I feel like, is such a hit and miss. Some people just really love Mecha. Some people really despise Mecha. Rom-com, I feel like, is the true power fantasy of the degenerates and... This shit does well. Look down upon. With Senin, Shonen, and Mystery all resting towards the top, then you move towards- Did he just say Senin? With Senin, Shonen- Senin and Shonen. Ah, my favorite genre, Senin. I also love Senin. And then Mystery all resting towards the top, then you move towards the middle with the likes of Slice of Life, Sports, and Mecha. Then you get to the bottom, where Romance, Horror, and even AI anime. And okay. then under all that. Under 100 piles of shit rom-coms, under 2,000 tons of VTuber merch, you get Isekai. And mm -hmm. I'm here to convince you that it could be the best genre in anime. Yes, even better than- It could be the best genre of anime. I mean, we've seen a lot of anime in this channel, right? Even before I watched a lot of anime in this channel, I primarily watched Battle Shonens, but obviously those are not the pinnacle of writing. I think that of all the animes that I've seen reaction-wise, Isekais definitely have one of the most in-depth writing that I've seen. It doesn't mean that Isekai has the most in-depth, but there's a lot of shitty Isekais, obviously. With the surgence of popularity in Isekai, of course there's going to be even more people trying to get it on the game because they see easy money. Therefore, you're going to find even more shitty Isekai simply due to the like, law of large numbers. The more there is, of course, the worse shit there is going to be. But, I mean, if you look at shows like ReZero, Mishako Tensei, don't you think that the writing's depth is very good? than AI anime. You somehow managed to dodge Isekai through all your travels through the anime. And again, I don't think a genre has a specific anchor on like a good writing, right? Any genre have can get good, good writing, right? It's not like a specific genre is better than most. No. Of course, like Battle Shonen, right? L l let's, let's just take Tensura for example. Tensura doesn't take itself seriously. Rimuru is a relatively flat character if you're talking about the complexity and the depth of writing compared to, let's say, Subaru or Rudy, right, from these different animes, right? Some animes aren't even trying to do it, right? Battle Shonen is like Jujutsu Kaisen, Naruto, One Piece. Yeah, One Piece can be very de deep, right? But Bleach and other shit, like, are you going to tell me it's deep? Demon Slayer, are you going to tell me it's deep, right? I don't think it's genre-specific, but there's definitely limitations with some genres. My medium, here's a quick 10-second breakdown on every isekai ever. Who's your bum kid who has no friends, gets hit by a mm -hmm. truck, and sent to a fantasy world where mm -hmm. he becomes the strongest character in this new world and achieves mm -hmm. a harem of all harems while speeding- <laughs> Dude, this isekai is so fucking bad it's good. I gotta cheese steal another world, the, the arc where he starts rising up the teacher because he fucking fought off like a, a bear or- I, I think it was a bear in like a camping field trip. <laughs> so ridiculous. Of all harems while speeding the demon king. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I just spoiled 427 series for you. Don't worry. They're all the fucking same garbage slob. I mean, yeah, the premise is pretty much the same, right? It's not like everyone always gets reincarnated after getting hit by truck. And there's different ways of doing isekai setup, right? Summoning is one often example. Sometimes you mysteriously just fucking blink into an isekai like Subaru from ReZero or like even Hinata from Tensura, right? But yeah, the blue plate template, right? Sorry, the blueprints template. 
if you think about isekai how it starts it always follows like a bingo card you can literally check off things that's a lot of isekai now i know i know asuna lover 443 is writing his comment isekai is so much better than you can imagine hater <laughs> i actually got a real comment like this but remember yeah. boys this video is going to that comment isn't even that bad i've seen way fucking dude <laughs> The, there's a lot of degenerates and i i've noticed that the comments get more degenerate and stupid the more sweaty the isekai is for example mushoku tensei and re-zero i'm not gonna get those kind of comments watching fucking demon slayer no everyone's just enjoying the unga bunga slayer but the moment that the writing gets too deep for me all these neckbeard armchair psychologists and pseudo intellects with their PhDs show up out of nowhere. And with me telling you that Isekai is the greatest genre in anime, with the likes of Mishoku Tensei, ReZero, and Overlord mm. among some of the most respected anime in the medium, yep. proving that Isekai can be good. Re is Those very three sweaty. have led to the creation. You don't think ReZero is sweaty? Bro, ReZero is the most fucking sweaty Isekai that I've farmed in this channel. Compared to Tensura, Mushoku Tensei? The level of depth and the much, not, tell, not telling you that this show is more deep, but it is competing on that level, if not more. The amount of people commenting fucking essays, writing their own fucking headcanon opinions and fucking uh, projecting it as if Tape, the fucking author, said it out loud. There's so many comments like that. Haven't you seen a single fucking ReZero playlist video? Read a single comment and you'll realize the level of fucking just sweatiness, the fucking dedication that these neckbeards have. And I think there's a, a pattern of behavior. There's a pattern of behavior I'm noticing with shows like Mushoku Tensei and ReZero and the type of people that comment these things, right? Think about what kind of show these shows are marketed towards. It's going to be, have to be relatable to the main character. Now... You don't have to relate with Rudy regarding the diddling shit, but there's a lot of other things regarding the growth and the hikikomori shit that a lot of people resonate with, even if they're not lollicons themselves. Think about ReZero, right? We're getting a little bit of background of Natsuki Subaru. We haven't gotten enough. We're still in season one, episode 20 right now. And we haven't gotten enough of what his actual backstory is, but we've gotten a vague, like a, a, gen like a general overlaps, right? Which is what? He fucking hates himself. He wasted his entire life doing fucking nothing, living a pampered life, and he despises himself. That's like the abstract, you know, uh, amount of backstory you've been given so far. And then think about the type of people that these animes are being marketed towards. It's exactly those type of people. People that have never accomplished anything. People that fucking hates their lives. People that are fucking stuck in their mother's basement. Fucking typing like keyboard fucking warriors. Going on tirades on different forums to get their opinions recognized. Rather than getting a fucking job and doing something. Right? These are the people that come out of the woodshed because this anime attracts that audience. And I don't think I'm even reaching right now. This is a pattern of behavior I've seen over and over and over. You never see this shit with other fucking battle shown in anime. Because those motherfuckers are brain dead and they're too busy power scaling Goku can beat fucking Anya from Spike's family. I genuinely believe that shows like this that panders towards a specific audience and that audience being those sweaty neckbeards that have their own arm psychology takes just like myself and again i think there's some sort of curse where because of the level of in-depth analysis and the commentary and the passion i show for these shows i also attract those same fucking neck beer trying to match my vibe it's this weird curse of i wrote I, i'm reaping what i'm sowing of the weirdest dynamic you'll see in anime today you see what most anime and tv shows fan reception is like a number line you can have some people who love a show all the way to some people that hate it and that is not the case with isekai you have three groups of people the people okay. that love isekai the people that think it's worse than brain rot and then mm -hmm. a third group people that are ashamed to say they watch isekai i, I am the self-proclaimed king of trash isekai reactions on youtube yep i don't care about what you say self-proclaimed i put that shit on a fucking <laughs> resume um isekai I'm proud to watch it, but sometimes I'm not proud to watch it. Like Remonster, <laughs> that's just dumb fuckery. Isekai is definitely quote unquote controversial. There's a lot of like repeated themes of Isekai and slavery, for example. Isekai and just like just getting a random horror and power fantasy. I don't know. It's definitely quote unquote trashy. But again, it's the rule of large numbers. The more there is, the more shit there's going to be. But there's also going to be diamonds in the rough. If you've seen ReZero, I would be proud to recommend ReZero to other people. For sure I would be. The people that think it's worse than brain rot, and then a third group. 
people that are ashamed to say they watch isekai i am the third group and if you're unsure what group you're in if you ever saw an anime with the title i got reincarnated as a dog hold up he said he's the third group Reese isekai 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 not native isekai native isekai isekai shonen isekai isekai <laughs> Oshinoka, not an isekai, but I... <laughs> Cap, bro. Your entire fucking channel is just farming isekai. Okay, thought I should cosplay as a cat. And then... Well, he's saying like he wouldn't want to let other people RL know, but this is his YouTube persona, so they would never know. Another world and thought to yourself, hmm, that sounds like something I should watch. You're probably also in the third group. But the reason why these three groups exist is also the same reason why it can surpass every other genre. But we'll get into that a bit later because first right. you need to understand how it all started. And before we continue on this journey, where did Isekai all start? I think that a lot of people had the misconception that SAO is an isekai or is not an isekai. I think that Kirito definitely is the default isekai main character template. A virtual world is another world. And if that, your definition of isekai is another worlder, then SAO definitely is an isekai. But I think that isekai definitely got popularized in 2016, maybe, in, uh, with ReZero. But then again, with the recent anime chart video we saw, remember? Talking about popular, you know, animes from 2004 to 2024. Bro, Inuyasha was from the beginning. But ReZero never even made it to the fucking list. We're not talking about when Isekai started. I'm talking about when it was popularized. When anime, every season, they decided to pump out just like 20 shitty Isekais with like one diamond in the rough. When did that all start? I feel like the popularization maybe have started 2016 and beyond. Maybe I'm capping journey to purify the isekai genre we're gonna crank up the stakes a bit the pinned comment on this video doesn't get ratioed by another comment on this video it means that isekai is the goat and my next video will be on re-zero but if someone does ratio me with a comment of another anime's name that is what my next video will be on so now that the stage is set let's get back to it it is widely regarded that mishoku tensei and sword art online are the two most important creations in isekai becoming what it is today Misho is mushoku tensei before re-zero I guess we're talking about the light novels maybe right now. Goku Tensei being touted the godfather of Isekai, introducing basically every single trope the genre knows. I feel like ReZero did this shit before Mushoku Tensei. Right? Like, the, if, we're, if we're talking about anime timeline, it's ReZero. But if we're talking like web novel, light novel shit, Mushoku Tensei before, but I definitely agree that Mushoku Tensei definitely has an impact on popularizing Isekai for sure. And Sword Art Online being an anime that, that took over with one of the coolest concepts we'd ever seen. And when I mean took over, this shit is a modern day equivalent mm -hmm. of free run feet pics. It was inescapable. SAO was so heavily targeted. That's so weird to see Ikirito in the Knight of Blood Guild outfit here. Now, there was a couple episodes, yeah. So heavily targeted at gamers and anime fans that for most people Kuradil. watching it was a dream come true. And this gamer Kirito even got a harem out of it with one mm -hmm. of them being his sister. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> And that girl, bro, this girl, no spoilers. She is the most unfortunate, most hated character. Not from the audience, but by the author as well. The things that the author does to this character for no fucking reason, it is mind-boggling. At this point, I feel like it's almost like a fantasy for the author to like put her through those kind of situations as he masturbates furiously. Like, straight up, there is something off there. But hey, at least it intrudes some cool concepts, right? Wait. What is going on to the show? What has happened to the plot? Hey, at least we have- Arisization, bro. If you haven't seen SAO Season 3, Season 4, you have no understanding what you're missing out on. Yes, there's some hard parts to get through in, you know, Season 1 after, you know, Aincrad ends and you're like, what are we doing playing this dumbass fucking racist fairy game? I understand, but you should watch that with your brain turned off. Thinking as if it's like a reality TV show as you see this girl get cooked. It's really fun if you do that. And then, season 2, GGO. Oh my god. You get to be introduced to one of the best girls in SAO. That arc is fantastic. Then, it's a little bit of a depression arc with Mother's Rosario. But there's a little bit of fun Tonki arc stuff too. And then, season 3, season 4. This shit is on another level. Yes, the writing might be inconsistent from time to time. But oh my god. SAO... Season 3, Season 4, minimum 8 out of 10. Minimum.
But hey, at least it introduced some cool concepts, right? Wait, what is going on to the show? What has happened to the plot? Hey, at least we have Mishoku Tensei. That's gotta have an original story, right? Wait, what? F fat loser gets hit by a truck and- It's all right. These are cliches for a reason. They exist because it's a good setup. It's all about the executions of it. Fat loser gets hit by a truck, perfectly fine. What's next? Set to another world where he's gifted with magic and everyone loves him and he has a harem? Wait, that hmm. sounds like the anime I just described. Wait. Well, yes, in a different <laughs> skin, I guess. Wait, hold on. Why does every Isekai protagonist look like Kirito? Because the more you can anchor people to their nostalgia, they know who Kirito is, right? Why would you not work off of that? You want to look at what worked well, copy it, and then customize it to your own unique flavor, and then execute that strategy. Hold up. What did you just say Rudis did? Yes. The two most popular and historically significant anime of the isekai genre are not always anime you want to admit watching and have some jar- Mmm, no. I'm perfectly fine admitting that I watch Essay and Mushoku Tensei. But if we're gonna talk about the things, like, doesn't mean I condone every fucking behavior. There's a lot of shitty things that happen. Doesn't mean that they're bad shows. This anime you want to admit watching and have some jarring- Now, I'm not sure if I'll be proud to say I watched Gushing Over Magical Girls. Right? Now, let's- let's- Let's not get it twisted, right? That show was a... <laughs> I'm not too sure if I could ever be proud of that, but hey, we got through it. Jarring issues that bleed into new Isekai and have been the origin of a lot of the negative as well as positive tropes. Except the thing is, the genre is not built from there and it spiraled leading into... Bro. Level 2 Cheat is an amazing Isekai. I think a lot of people give this show so much hate because they didn't get through episode 2. Episode 1 is a dog shit copy paste isekai generic story. Absolutely. Episode 2, you hear Danna sama, it's a wrap. And then after that, you realize what kind of show act actually is. It's not about the power of fantasy. It's about just chilling in another world. It's the peak slice of life isekai. Bro, this show right here? Newgate? Wait, where is Newgate? Where is Newgate, bro? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Positive tropes. Except the thing Wait is, for it. the genre is not built from there. This show is like I use this as like a standard of measurement to think if an anime is mid. This show was so fucking mediocre. It had the most mediocre animation, mediocre plot. It's not good, nor is it bad. There was one good episode where he fought against his Gerard guy, but other than that, holy shit. You could see the anime literally fall apart near the end. Like an actual 5 out of 10 anime. And it spiraled, leading into some of the worst girl debates, harems, and power fantasies you'll ever see. It's like, holy mother of god, some of the shit they put out is so unwatchable. And before we can redeem <laughs> yes. something, before we take Isekai to the confession booth, we need to get deep into the weeds of what right. makes Isekai so shit. So Put your helmet on, strap in, and let's get to it. But before we do jump in, if you want to get mm -hmm. Isekai into your dream world, where you can be a tree, a rabbit, maybe even a car, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let's get back to it. Just as a... Yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Quick little little share already. We'll, we'll do another one. But there's the video, guys. Go give it a like. Check out his channel. General statement. Most of the criticisms I'm about to bring on the Isekai genre do not apply to five or so anime that are voided from these because these mm. are actually pretty good. So Yeah, these are pretty much the top five. Well, I wouldn't say top five, but of course, like these are like God tier Isekais in my opinion, right? Like these are fantastic. Now, I haven't seen Overlord just yet, but people glaze this shit to the next level too. Along the likes of like Tensura and Mushoku Tensei and ReZero and Konosuba. So I, I agree. And pretty much, if your show is an e e Isekai Quartet, there's a show called Isekai Quartet, right? If your show made it there, even like Tanya, does that mean it's really good? I'm not really sure. Or Spider Isekai, that's peak. Listen, I love So I'm a Spider, So What, Kumodeska. The plot is fucking fantastic. But I think the animation really holds it back. The story is amazing, but... This show, and I don't know, I think a lot of people talk shit about the CGI in Overlord too, but if we're talking about the full products, not just the story, maybe it kind of falls off. ...from these because these are actually pretty good. So an anime can be broken down into basically five parts. The world, okay. the characters, the animation, the story, and then the fights. So how does the world... Hmm, I feel like it's just the anime? What, what's the five parameters he's judging right now? ...broken down into basically five parts. The world... The world, the characters, the, the characters, animation, the story. animation, production value, the story, the actual plot itself, story, and then the fights, the fights. I feel like it should be soundtrack. I, I feel like one of, well, everyone has their different parameters, right? Who am I to say it should be? But I like judge the production value, which is the animation. 
right? I judge the soundtrack. I think a music, the soundtrack is an integral part of the anime. Without soundtrack, sometimes the anime just falls flat. I think ReZero, for example, has such a good fucking soundtrack that it just fucking hits. Voice acting for sure. I think voice acting to a degree doesn't really matter too much because of how good voice acting is. Like the floor, not even talking about the ceiling, like the, the average voice acting in Japanese like um, industry is so good that maybe it doesn't really matter, but maybe some voice acting definitely does carry. Pacing, I feel like the direction of the anime, right? Maybe this kind of ties into the production value in terms of the animation. But when I think animation, I'm thinking of like the quality of what I'm watching. Like, it does it look good? And then the other thing is, even if it looks good, what about the overall adaptation, like the pacing of the, like the story? Because right now, Tensura, the pacing is fucking dog shit. But a lot of people saying, no, this shit's integral. But right now, fights is important parameter we're considering. So how does the world of Isekai hold up? I mean, they should all be insane and great and perfect and creative. I mean, you can go anywhere. You can do anything. Why yep. did he just transform into a vending machine? Vending machine Isekai is actually good. It is very good. It's a chill slice of life anime. Crazy concept. I didn't think it was bad. Machine. Like, come on, dude, 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 dude. You got to understand, right? You got to understand. Think about how much goes into making a story. You got to have a creator. You got to have editors. You got to have publishers, a staff. Think even the words right now I'm saying I had to script. How did no one stop the author and say, hey, man, I know you're into vending machines, but this, this is the stupidest fucking idea you could have ever came up with. No, I think that this is a very unique twist. When you're in a saturated market, you're trying to penetrate it from a different angle. You can't just have the same copy-paste isekai story, so how do you stand out? Sometimes, you just get the craziest concept. Reincarnated as a sword. Reincarnated as Inukai-san's dog. Reincarnated as a fucking pig to a cute girl that has a farm that feeds you. Reincarnated as a vending machine. Reincarnated as a hot spring. These are intentional things that the authors are doing. Of course, they realize it's ridiculous. But if you're trying to stand out amongst the competition, it's not a bad strategy. And then all that matters is how is the story beyond that? I've only seen about four or five episodes of Vending Machine. But the premise was pretty interesting. Unfortunate that the YouTube audience was not there. And this shit got a light novel too. Inukai wasn't reincarnation, it's just pure transform. That is just even degenerate on a different level then. And an anime, and a manga. Like, who thought this was the move? But we're gonna come back to this later, because even though I was joking around a little bit, I wasn't. Its creation is representative of something super dark that has changed media as a whole. Back okay. to the world, though, because sure, there are some that are better than others, but the reality is about 90% of them are just some Game of Thrones or Witcher 3-esque setting. Absolutely. You would think that doing isekai would create amazing world building, so rich and in depth with different cultures where each different continent and nation represents something, right? Mushoku Tensei does that amazingly. Mushoku Tensei does that so fucking well. But because of the nature of the isekai where you don't really have to do that, like you just get ported in, you're just in this world and it's up to you to kind of show how much of the world you want to show. And sometimes, they just show just as much as necessary without really going into enrich the entire world like Mushoku Tensei. So the world building does fall flat sometimes simply due to the nature of Isekai, I've noticed. Typical fantasy world with some magic thrown in, a demon lord, and yes, you will find outliers if you look enough. But for the most part, that's what all the settings are. Now yeah, most Isekai world building is fucking ass. Even though they have an opportunity to, again, build it and, 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 and just basically just develop it. They just don't do it because they don't need to do it. You just have an insert fucking main character show about the waifu and a harem with some cheap fucking uh, demon lord thing and you show the world just as much as you need to show. Now a large part of that will come from the fact that Mishoku Tensei is the most critically acclaimed of all isekai. So many of them just straight up copy and paste. Wait, 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 wait. Fantasy of the year, second place. Uh, I'm gonna assume Frieden got first place here for fantasy. I'm not sure. It's funny how Mushoku Tensei competes in fantasy, and it is fantasy, but the reoccurring meme is that fantasy is basically native isekai. Because if you remove Rudy from the story, if you remove the other worlders, Mushoku Tensei world is a fantasy world, but the isekai component is just the main character being from another fucking world, right? So many of them just straight up copy and paste it and change it a little bit, except they're not changing anything for the better, instead they just change it and make things way worse. Take I got a cheat skill and <laughs> This anime, dude. Oh my god, it's so bad! It's so beyond- Dude. The most interesting parts of this anime, no cap, right? I actually did enjoy it when it was all about 
how other people were reacting to him being so hot in Earth, right? When he is in the other world fighting monster CGI, I do not give a fuck. The animation is like 4 out of 10. I don't care about any of these monsters. Bro one-shots them anyways. Who gives a fuck? But when you go back on Earth, and this dude's walking in the streets, and everyone is breaking their necks left and right, be like, oh my god, this guy's so hot. Everyone is fucking gushing. It's so unreasonable. And that power fantasy is more fun than the actual combat in another world, man. In another world, something, something, something. Basically, our protagonist gets transported into a fantasy world and lives near a forest, and he visits a kingdom once or twice to meet up with a king and a princess. Except, it's not like Mishoku Tensei, where these- Yeah, you don't give a fuck about that world. I don't care about that kingdom. Who cares? What's the history? What's the significance? I don't know any about them. Why would I care about them? The environments feel lived in, where it feels like this stuff matters. Exactly! Really where a character was, and you don't actually believe anything is going on. Like, who gives a shit about this place? What's the fucking history of the kingdom? No one cares, because they didn't develop it. Because at the end of the day, it's a cheap power fantasy where the dude is surrounded by women. That doesn't mean that Rudy's not surrounded by women. But, like, if you look at the fucking writing, the world, bro. This is an isekai where they do not give a fuck about the world building. On this world, you don't think it lives beyond the perspective we're granted. These lower quality isekai never take any risk showing off their city or adding any depth. And every time you watch... Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, no, level... Level 2 cheat does not really have world building. It doesn't, right? I mean, we moved locations from one time to another, but other than that, do we know any significance of different countries and nations? Not really, right? We kind of abstractly know that there's like a demon lord place and like the human place, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, world building on this show, it's pretty bad. But you don't need it for this kind of show because this show is more of the character interactions and the slice of life moments. This show is genuinely great. Level 2 cheat is genuinely great. Watching Isekai, you're like, this could be reskinned into any city, any design, because it's purely cosmetic. The setting has nothing. Yeah, but again, we're just talking about world building right now, and he's right. The world building in these shows suck. Nothing to do with the story, characters, or world. Half the fucking time, the kings don't even act like kings. The guards do nothing, and literally, the civilians won't have eyes. What's frustrating, there is literally limitless possibilities. But jumping forward to my least favorite part about Isekai, mm -hmm. sometimes it's my favorite part, it's the characters. Now, generalizing like this, the world building part, again, it's not like you need to have great world building for some shows to execute their strategy. I don't think that level 2 cheat needs to have great world building because they're doing something different, right? You don't really give a fuck about like, like, I think world building is important for like example in ReZero. Where immediately, I gave a fuck about the fight between Elsa and Reinhardt. Because Reinhardt was built up as this source saint from the kingdom of Lubunica, knight amongst knights. The glaze was insane. I actually cared about it. He comes from this family of Von Austria, and they're a fucking goaded. But I don't know exactly how strong they are until Elsa, this bowel hunter girl that, like, is from the northern provinces. The characteristics of the knives is from there, the black hair, the pale skin. She has the specific characteristics of cutting people up, and we know how strong she is. And the moment that she shows respects to Reinhardt and saying, night amongst knights, even better than I expected. Like, this shit gives me goosebumps. This shit makes me care about the battle, about the characters, about the different moves they use. Because the world building was there. I care about the characters and what they stand for because they've established that world for me. But a lot of the times, people don't do that shit, and I can't get hyped about it. Right, Newgate, uh, I got, uh, not I got a cheat skill because that's not really doing that kind of shit. Newgate and um, I got a cheat skill from another world. Sorry, level two cheat is the other one I'm excluding. Those shows where you show the action and the combat, the, the monsters are very strong. But like, I don't give a fuck. How do you expect me to care about these characters fighting if I don't know what's on the line, if I don't know their histories and what they're even fighting for. So I think world building is one of the most important things in Isekai if you're trying to make people give a fuck about the characters and what they kind of stand for. And then there is like shows like Level 2 Cheat where it's kind of excluded from that where you don't really need a world building because it's just like character interactions. It's more like a rom-com slice of life if you think about it. Because a rom-com slice of life, you don't need world building. The dialogue between the character interactions is what carries the show. So for sure, that is excluded. But yeah, world building, I think, is one of the most important things in Isekai. But sometimes they don't need it. And most of the times, garbage slop will just ignore that part. And you get what you get. This really does make no sense. Because in most situations, you're going to be able to find good or bad characters in any genre. 
Except that's not the case in Isekai, because there's about four central character types in every single Isekai. Yeah. The character that teaches the MC about the world, the, the female love interest, and then yeah. the other female love <laughs> The cuck squad. Queenella made it! Queenella made it! I love my girl Queenella so much. She never did anything wrong. Bless up, my queen. Interest. And that's it. These four are literally the only characters of significance in any Isekai. And you are they? Let me think, let me think. Well, you always have the main character, right? You have the main love interest for sure. The guy that teaches you about stuff. Sometimes it's like a familiar. Sometimes it's like a guide. Is there? Let's think about it. ReZero, right? Main character. Love interest, Amelia. Uh, other girls. <laughs> Rem, the land dragon right now. <laughs> Maybe. And some other girls. Uh, the guy. Who is the guy right now in ReZero? It's a guy person that like, gives him all the fucking help and shit. I'm not really sure. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this template does fit. I, I, I think that the main three here, right? OP dude, main love interest, and harm definitely fits. And sometimes there definitely is like a guy. Uh, I think it might be Wilhelm, but he's not always there. I don't know. You might be saying that. Yeah, there's always a token lolly, right? Token lolly, token trap, right? Uh, what else? The guild receptionist? No, guild receptionist. The guild receptionist girl is always there. In every isekai, there's always a guild, and there's always a fucking guild reception that's busty as fuck. That, that's always the case. And they're like, eh, you forgot. And then there's always a demon lord, right? There, there's always a demon lord, right? What else is there? Sometimes there's like, what's hap what happens? You're like the isekai MC, but like, there's like the actual true ikumen, like isekai, like example, shield hero, right? You get ported in, but people fucking hate you. But then there's the real hot fucking heroes like Motoyasu, who's a fucking asshole. Yeah, there's stuff like that. Childhood friend doesn't really exist in Isekai. Because you're usually just getting transported, just summoned, you know, separately. Just of significance in any Isekai, and you might be. The creepy dudes. The creepy dudes that's always trying to fucking rape girls for whatever reason. Slaves. Slaves always exist in Isekai characters, right? But no, yeah, focus, focus. We're getting, we, we can go on a fucking tangent about this. And they're like, eh, you forgot about the antagonist. No, I didn't forget nothing because okay. the antagonists literally do not matter. And the character development is. The antagonists do not matter in an Isekai. Do they not matter in an Isekai? Mushoku Tensei, who's the antagonist? There's many different antagonists that, straight, that changes. Uh, ReZero, who's the main antagonist? Well, Betrugus is right now. The White Whale's kind of right now. Antagonist is... There's a main demon lord, usually. Let him cook. Completely thrown out the window. It's like the writers are sitting there like, Hmm, everyone's watched Sword Art Online, so why don't we just take Kirito and put him into our story? Then we've won, because they already know who he is. We don't have to develop him. And the worst part is, Kirito isn't even that great of a character to begin with. And another type of MC I classify... He's not really wrong about that either, right? A lot of people do just insert Kirito because, again, the familiarity. Why, as the NPC MC, the stuff where they're all happy and jolly and make the right decisions every single time. It's like at that point, the writers are making it clear and obvious that they're scared to have conflict within the characters. Yeah, and these characters are the antithesis of Subaru from ReZero. I'd much rather have a character who is flawed. And being normal is flawed. These dudes are not normal. These dudes are on a different fucking level of perfection where everything that they solve is so easy. There is no con there is no like um trials. There's no challenge. You don't earn anything. He just shows up, saves everyone, and leaves, and the power fantasy gets boring. What's the fun when the problem is solved before it's even fucking like dealt with, right? It's like what what's the fucking point of it? Because Subaru is such a broken person inside during arc 3 in the beginning, right? It leads to really interesting developments and characterizations, right? And it makes you really relate to the character because everyone can relate to, you know, just being shitty and trying to be better. Sometimes there's this power fantasy of perfect main character solving everything, and I think that some shows like Cautious Hero, for example, or other more comedic elements, like if an isekai is not trying to be serious, then having a perfect character just, you know, solve everything actually helps. It's just like, again, it, that's more of like a comedic route. But if you're trying to have like a, it's like a serious story, some serious drama, but the main character just solves everything because they're Jesus Christ, it's going to get boring really fucking fast. Time. It's like at that point, the writers are making it clear and obvious that they're scared to have conflict within the characters. And for whatever reason, they don't want their characters to grow. And it's time now to hone in on how Isekai do female characters because 95% of 
they're just uh so i wonder who has worse uh female characters isekai or rom-coms because i think both are literal fucking power fantasies and hear me out rom-coms a power fantasy it absolutely is rom-coms literally sell you the fantasy that you a fucking virgin loser neckbeard fat piece of shit not smart not popular got no money got fucking nothing got no family name you never accomplished anything you've never done anything for yourself the hottest girl fucking shows up out of nowhere and pulls you out <laughs> and saves you. Why? Because it's a power fantasy. They're selling you this shit to pander towards you. And if you feel let my words as pierce through your soul, just think about why that is. Because it was way too real for you. I truly believe that rom-coms are power fantasies. And then the girls in those shows are fucking flat characters. Not flat in terms of their bust. They're extremely stacked. But in terms of the character, they're just static. They have no struggles. They're just there so that you can insert yourself to the main character and get the big booboo girl. That's seemingly perfect. Dangers in my heart, though. Totally different. When a girl actually writes a rom-com, the girl character suddenly becomes dynamic. They feel real. They have their own insecurity. They have their own flaws that they work through. And by doing that, the character feels fucking real. Now, what has the worst girl then? Representation. Rom-coms or isekais? them completely disrespect them as characters except mishoku tensai which i have a whole video on yeah i think selfie's pretty good like i i think they're you know roxy selfie and we'll see eris later on like they're definitely more developed than any other fucking you know girl characters in most isekais because they just again their literal existence is you're just a pair of tits to exist in the screen for the horny kids that's it so what of the animation i mean mishoku tensai almost won best animation of the year only to fall flat to the wow kimetsu no yaiba Kobayashi's Dragon Maid? Was that goaded in animation? I never knew. Mushoku Tensei, One Direct Priority, never heard of that. JJK, I can see for sure. Vivi, I've heard of that one. Greatest piece of media ever in- Love is War? What do you mean Love is War? I don't see Love is War here. In Demon Slayer. That was you a joke. baby. Please do not dislike. And for- <laughs> What is the joke? For in Demon Slayer. Tensei almost won best animation of the year only to yeah. fall flat to the greatest piece of media ever in Demon Slayer. Greatest piece of media ever, Demon Slayer? I agree, bro. <laughs> I agree. You know why? Because Hashira Training Arc literally was a movie they adapted for fucking like eight episodes. They had like fucking four pages of content to fucking stretch and it was dog shit near the end. And then they clutched with the finale and everyone forgot how shit it is and people glazed Demon Slayer. It truly is peak media. If they can do something like that, just fucking shut the entire audience up with the finale, bro. I think they cooking something. That was a joke. Please do not dislike. And for Isekai other than Mishoku Tensei, it's like, okay. They all have that copy and paste style. Like, you know. Yeah, most anime, um, most Isekais, the animation is very poor. It is very poor. Now that I really think about it, there's a lot of also shitty CGI implemented. It's just because it's CGI it doesn't mean it's bad. But the implementation of the CGI and how jarring it is when you transition from 2D to CGI is the thing that really pisses me off. But I can't really think of much other... Even ReZero, right? Let's think about it for a second. I don't think that ReZero has better animation than Mushiku Tensei. And I don't think I'm wrong. For sure, some scenes, the animation quality is amazing. But, like, but, like, I just, I just feel like Mushoku Tensei is way better in animation. Am I crazy? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think MT is better animation. What other anime has had insane good animation? Like, if, even if you think about Konosuba, no. I haven't seen Overlord yet, but I hear a lot of people shit talk about the CGI later, so I'm sure that also doesn't count. Is Mushoku Tensei the best animated anime? It, sorry, Isekai anime. I think it might be. Now, well, what about SAO Season 3 and Season 4? Arisization War of the Underworld. A1 Pictures cooking. That is still an Isekai. Tensura? Fuck no. Tensura right now? Hell nah. There's some good moments for Tensura, but Season 3 is a thing. Nah, nah. Maybe a single season, but I don't know. I think MT is best, but yeah. The Leafa grape scene. The amount of money poured, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears they dedicated into the Leafa grape scene. Seventh Prince had amazing animation for sure, but I think MT is still better.
know the one you use when you're in real life and you can put on an anime filter? That's basically the art direction of every isekai, and I would imagine most of these come from budget problems because I don't think it takes an Einstein to know that this doesn't look great and they don't want it to look like this, but to be- Yeah, it just looks mid. It just, it just looks passable, permissible. Not bad, not amazing, just- all right. To be fair, shitting on a genre for bad animation is kind of just whack because every genre got some stuff that just looks like shit. So let's just jump over to the biggest. Animation is the lowest uh, parameter to judge if an anime is good. And hear me out. You think that if you're watching anime, the whole point of it is the animation. But what I value more is the actual plot, a compelling story soundtrack that is so hype and just makes the plot even bear the story better right and then it's voice acting then animation for example so i'm a spider so what animation is dog shit but the plot in the beginning compelled me so hard that i was willing to overlook the shitty cgi near the end because the story is so good doesn't mean that i'm fine with bad animation but i think that again if we're gonna let's say let's take demon slayer for example the animation is fucking amazing, but is the story writing amazing? Not really. It's just for the fights, right? It's just for the hype fights, and that's the whole point of Demon Slayer for sure. I think that the more I watch, and I've had this take when uh, Classroom of the Elites was airing, a lot of people were angry about it. And I said, why are you getting upset that a show like this that's grounded in dialogues has bad animation? But that was actually wrong of me, because I watched another dude's video. I think his name was... Ah, fuck, I forgot his name. But the example was, look at Kaguya-sama. Kaguya-sama has amazing visuals. And even though there's no fight scene, it's all dialogue. Because of the animation, you can make the dialogue even more engaging. I completely agree with that. Biggest issue. And that's the story. Because all of them are trash. Like, oh my goodness. Like I said. Yeah, most stories are fucking trash. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And again, the more isekai there is, again, the more quantity, the more volume of content there is, Inevitably, there's gonna be more trash amongst the dump. Earlier, not only are they all the same, but I legit think some of them prioritize fan service over everything else. Like, yes, because fan service is the lowest hanging fruit. Sex sells, degenerate kids, horny kids watch this shit, and it's just fulfilling the bottom line. There's no passion or love poured into it. Now, I'm not saying this specific for level 2 cheat. Yes, there's a lot of fat, you know, fan service, and I still love level 2 cheat skill, but a lot of different enemies. Again, they just pandering towards the lowest hanging fruit because it makes them their bottom line. Everything else. Like, the writers got a long list of priorities from girl moments, power fantasy moments, shitty jokes, and all the way down that list is a competent story. For example, the anime My Level 2, whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, come on! Stop shitting on this! This is so good! Like, this is a fairly popular anime. and It's so good! In, it's like, what's going on? Did we just forget to write some form of conflict? Half the time they just... No, 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 no. You don't understand. You're already going in this wrong. There is no conflict. We're chilling in another world. The whole premise is the dude says, I do not want to be a hero. I'm going to chill with Fenris. All these different girls are fucking getting free rent. And we're just going to chill and have a fun time. And that's it. Mention the demon king here or there. But God forbid you actually show this supposed demon king. Much less develop the demon king. The demon king? Again, later shows up and it gets developed so much by having a romantic relationship with one of the girls that's staying at her place. And then the comedy gets even better. This dude, again, hasn't seen level 2 cheat and that's totally fine. If you've only seen three episodes, for sure you can come to this conclusion. But the Demon King is one of the best written characters. He gets developed so much. And he has a shitty brother, which he gets developed even more because of the shitty angry brother. Some of the stories we have, you're just sitting there like my imagination would tell a more compelling story than whatever is being shown on screen right now. I think the issue lies in the fact that they're all trying to be everything. They're trying to mix in comedy, slice of life, action, fantasy, senin, romance, and magic all in- This dude really calling this senin. Seinen. Seinen. Everything. They're trying to mix in comedy, slice of life, action, fantasy, senin, romance, Senin? How is that Senin? Romance and magic all into one story. While not developing any of their attributes, and we talked about it already, but the characters and the world and the plot just gets put in the back burner just so they can fit in all the stuff they know anime fans like. I'll talk about it a bit. Hmm. Ignoring all the important writing, all the developments, different things, being too overloaded with different, you know, uh, garbage fucking tropes, 
and then just having mediocre fan service through the hype fights or you know sex appeal just to tap into the audience and sell it to horny kids yeah i agree a bit later but they can turn this round into a strength trust me anyways to wrap this section up let's get to the fights i don't think it takes a genius to know considering everything i just said the fights kind of suck because you don't care about them and they don't look that good and it's almost like the sky riders are like isekai fights eminence and shadow there are some very memorable fights Solo leveling, there's- nah, solo leveling is not an isekai, that's more dungeon instant shit. Mushoku Tensei, the fights are pretty fucking good. Re-Zero? I've only seen one real actual- two fights now, right? Reinhardt versus Elsa, and now Wilhelm versus the White Whale. Yeah, there's some other quote-unquote fights, but I don't really consider them fights. Hmm, is there- SAO, there's a lot of fucking fights. Like, hmm, anime fan. Seventh Prince has amazing fights for sure. They like fights, so let's just implement them every so often into the story. And it's like, bro, that's not how that works. We don't care if random main characters are fighting other random characters. Exactly. Remember the example I gave you during the world building about Elsa versus Reinhardt and how much I gave a fuck about that by episode three? But a show like Nobody Remembers Me, even though the soundtrack is hype, even though the animation is hype, even though there's a busty ass succubus fighting against a fucking Kirito clone, I just don't give a fuck. Because again, I'm not immersed into the world. I have no idea what's fucking at stakes. It just doesn't care. It just doesn't matter to me. So I think the fights are just as hype as how much you're immersed into the world thanks to the world building. And of course, if you have better animation, the fights can seem even more compelling. To save random female characters, it's just like, don't be clicking with any of us. And on top of all that, they can be in slow motion too, with the most generic folk music you'll ever hear in the background. Yeah, and a lot of CGI included too sometimes. Background. And with that, I just dug East Scott into the dirt. And I mean, I almost went a little bit too hard on them. A little bit extra. And I hear you. I see it. I know you've commented it. If East Scott is so bad, why does it keep getting made, you idiot? Well, Because it's popular. Because people love this shit. Because... As many people call things bad, guess what? The, think how stupid the average person is and realize half are dumber than that. When you're trying to appeal to bigger numbers, the more unga boonga lower hanging fruit you can pump out, the more people are going to click onto that shit. It's just that simple. Oh, let's dig into that. Pretty much all isekai originate from light novels, instead, just like manga is to anime. And if you thought read the manga bros are bad, the read the light novel bros are even worse. Yeah, and then we go beyond one step. Read the fucking web novel, bro. <laughs> you think light novel you're an elitist? Nah, you don't know fucking ReZero. You watch ReZero fucking- You've read light novel? Bro, I read the fucking web novel. <laughs> yeah, you think you know the fucking web novel? You think you know ReZero because you read the fucking web novel? Well, guess what? I am the fucking author himself. I created ReZero. You think you know ReZero because you read the web novel? I wrote the web novel. <laughs> You think you know ReZero because you wrote ReZero? I'm your mom. I gave birth to you. I am the reason ReZero even... <laughs> you see, it's never gonna end the gatekeeping. Worse. And to be fair, they were pretty nice to me on my past video, but I've seen them elsewhere. And dog, they be talking like it's two different properties, like they should be titled differently. I can't imagine the light novel. Sometimes the anime is adapted from specifically the light novel or specifically the web novel or specifically the manga. So there is some valid criticisms in like how accurate the story is, but for sure. ...of the vending machine anime makes it any better, but who knows, maybe they're right. But essentially through sales and consumption, it seems mm -hmm. in Japan that these really crappy concepts just sell. And I don't think it's limited to anime from shitty sitcoms to crappy dramas to K-dramas. There's some genres of media that we just like the concept enough that we'll consume. Isekai better than shonen? Well, to some people, but if we're talking about pure numbers, just shonen is always just gonna outsell. Here's my theory. Again. Think about the people that watch like Naruto, One Piece, Bleach. Not saying that One Piece is a children's show. There's a lot of deep themes and big giga brain shit going on there. But Shonen Jump series, Battle Shonen series, My, My Caveman Academia, Unga Boonga Slayer, Jujutsu Mid, right? They're fantastic. They're fun. But who is it pandering towards? Kids. How many in a demographic of people that watch, you know, media? Who has more free time? Do you think that Bob Doyle, who is 33 years old, has a fucking job nine to five? has a fucking family, kids on the way, have time to sit there and watch anime? No. Of course not. The kids do, right? The kids do. So, and the kids fucking love shonen because it's easy to understand. It's just hype fights. So those shows that pattern towards kids are going to be the most popular. And then on top of that, then you have to ask, well, why isn't Isekai popular to kids? I think that 
isekai is more targeted towards older people that are washed. And let, 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 let me cook. Begin. Remember my whole talk about what kind of show these isekais are marketed towards, right? A bunch of fucking people that are washed. A bunch of people that feel like their future is escaping from them. They have... Maybe they couldn't get a good job. They couldn't get into a good school. They feel like they're fucking losers and outcasts of life, right? Doesn't mean everyone watching isekai is like that. But if the main character of these isekais are portrayed like that, then for sure the audience is going to you know, uh, revolve around them. Do you see like Naruto, Luffy, Ichigo, Itadori Yuji, fucking Deku? Are they these fucking losers? Well, maybe at the end, people shit on Deku, but there's a lot of themes of never giving up motivation, having that fiery spirit that the kids can relate to. But I don't think that kids see the isekai character of a fat 40-year-old getting hit by a fucking truck and living a new life. I don't think they can really relate to that. I think an older degenerate audience can relate to that. And again, the disparity between the amount of older people versus the younger people is why Shonen simply has more numbers than isekai. I think that's what's going on. ...to media, and we just like the concept enough that we'll consume it even knowing it's bad. I think that's part of why we watch, because despite shitting on the genre, part of the charm is just how bad they are. And also, let's... Yeah, sometimes, again... And in terms of reaction content, it's more fun to watch shitty shows so that we can laugh at it together than watching an objectively good show for reaction content. To be honest, some of them have insane titles that somehow draw your This is screwed up, but I was reincarnated as a girl in another world. That's not even that bad. I've seen way worse. Interesting. And it's almost like a YouTube title and thumbnail draws your interest. When you see an entire anime centered around vending machines, I think it's hard to not be a little bit curious in some sure. regard. And some of them are pretty clearly coming. The hero and his elf bride open a pizza parlor in another world. Aww. That sounds like a fun slice of life show. I, I check it out. I, I, honestly, I, I think slice of life isekais are very underrated. I think that like campfire cooking in another world is a fantastic slice of life isekai. There is some battle shonen elements, some hype shit going on, but there is some power fantasy, but... I, I, and like Elf Bride, Elf Bride isn't a, an isekai. It's more of a native isekai fantasy rom-com, right? Level 2 cheat is another slice of life, you know, isekai. I, I think that there's an untapped market in good slice of life isekai, man. Coming from a place of title first and going from there in order to draw attention to their anime. Yeah, and Tensura, right? I think that, like, again, what a ridiculous name. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. The main character is a slime? What? Right? It gets the appeal. It gets the hook. They are a light novel. But at the same time, I wouldn't watch an anime about a vending machine, much less read a short little novel on it. Like, the math there is just not mathing. But how could Isekai Isen to become better than all other genres and not be the heap of garbage it is? It can't. Because there's always going to be more people making Isekai. And the more popular Isekai genre gets, the more people are going to come in. And the more trash there's going to be. At that point, again, just rule of large numbers. The more there is, the more trash there's also going to be, no matter what. But a bombastic and bustling empire that will conquer anime for years to come. To start, we've already established the biggest issue in Isekai is the repetitiveness of all the junk. And there's so many issues that can come from that. Stories are boundless. That is the very essence of what makes them great. Why would you- Yeah, but it's- here's the thing. Let me give you a good example here. You know those AAA game studios? that has a whole team of developers working on a game so fucking hard to sell a, you know, sell a couple copies. And then there's mobile game developers where a team that would, and you, you don't even have, you can put in like such less resources to create that mobile game. And you can make way more money off of that mobile game through microtransactions than you could ever make with that AAA game, right? Let's apply that concept here right now. Sure, maybe you should work really hard and try to fucking create a masterful work like Mushoku Tensei. Or, or, you can just fucking slap a shitty isekai template, just make some dumbass shit. It'll still sell, you get the money and you get out. I think that it's just a quick cash grab, genuinely. The isekai trend is there, people see how profitable it can be, and rather than uh, aiming for the high point, they have their own business strategy of making just garbage isekai, get their bottom line and get the fuck out. You choose to put yourself into a box for absolutely no reason at all. It almost makes you think the success of Mishoku Tensei and SAO almost put a limiter on what stories were being created. A limiter, huh? No, I feel like... Maybe the standard is too high and people can't meet it. Maybe the author of Musoku Tensei and ReZero and SAO and all these different, you know, highly acclaimed isekais have set the bar so high that no other author can get there because they're just that talented writers. I refuse to believe that. I think there's plenty of talent, but I think that 
there is a conflict of interest in creating an amazing story versus making as much money as possible. And of course, that if you can make an amazing story like Mushoku Tensei or ReZero, I think you can make a lot of money. But at the same time, you can also make more money with less effort by making these cheap isekais. Because all of them fell in line, but isekai has way more potential than any other genre. There's so many outcomes and combinations, and you can tap into every single aspect of what- And here's the most ironic thing. What this guy's saying is correct. What this guy is saying about the whole nature of Isekai is so correct. You you can have so much rich world building. There's so much endless possibilities you can do in this new fantasy world. But here's the thing. You also don't have to do it. Right? The whole point of the Isekai setup is that you don't have to do any world building either. You don't have to do any of the character development either. You can just insert this dude into a new world and show just as enough as possible and just just do based, you know, uh fan service and crank out dumb shit and power fantasy and sell. Right? That is the catch of Isekai. Yes, there's limitless possibilities, but also, you don't even have to do it because of the nature of the Isekai, and therefore they're getting away with it. You can tap into every single aspect of what makes anime great. For example, you can have a slice of life Isekai where someone dies and gets transported into this world where everyone has access to planet to planet travel. But this Whoa. character is dealing with PTSD from his job at McDonald's in the past <laughs> life, so he's having a hard time making alien friends. So it you're cooking. Hey, you should write this. He's a guy. Watch it. Keeps on bouncing from planet to planet to find himself. Would you rather that? That sounds weird and interesting. That? I would watch it. The whole planet to planet. I, I, I'm down. Or another power fantasy. You could have another isekai where it's a mecha anime world where it's like game. I'm not sure if I'd watch because it's already Mecha. Game of Thrones meets Code Geass meets Power Rangers and creates a compelling story. Would you rather that? That sounds epic. Or another power fantasy. Or how about instead of an insane harem, we instead isekai them into a cyberpunky world, but instead of the perspective of gangsters, it's just normal people living their lives and trying to form relationships. Now that sounds good. But that's not gonna sell. Because we need Booba to sell. Kinda boring. But I still think it's better than a power fantasy. Maybe we can have an isekai where we stay in the real world for a long time. And I know I understand. I'm a YouTuber. I know you need to hook people in. I get it. So here's what you can do. You can open up a scene. The character dies. We spend an episode in this new world. You hook us into your show. And then boom, you give us a three episode run of the main character in their past life. And it's been sent to death. But all isekai at their heart can be redemption stories. But the issue is none of them, besides a select few, choose to hone in on what the MC actually is like in their past life. And yeah, a lot of isekais honestly also do completely ignore what they were like in the past life. There's some shows, again, maybe it's like a lot of shows, isekai, they're not trying to be too serious. So I guess, you know, trying to reflect back to the past life and how much of a degenerate they are and trying to you know, grow from that is too serious and dark of a tone for what the show is intended to be. But for sure, I think that like, and not every isekai needs to relate it back to their life, but I've noticed that whenever there's times where the character relates back to their past life, like Mushoku Tensei ReZero, those main characters are even more interesting as a character because of their complexity and their depth. But again, you don't have to do it for different strategies. An even better idea that can make isekai even greater, why don't we not make it a redemption story, but instead make it so our main character is leaving behind something they truly care about? You see my point? No other genre has the amount of options that Isekai does. The amount of overlap potential Isekai has is unlike any other, and it mixes and flows so smooth. The genre has so many opportunities to grab you by the heart and just wow you with creativity. Tell complex stories that make sense, but instead choose to tell the same repetitive tales over and over again. And I think one of the most frustrating realities comes from the fact that the most popular anime in the world, One Piece, does a lot of things that Isekai can do just way better than Isekai. You may be like, what are you talking about? In One Piece, you go island to island, and each island has a vast different cast, a different story, different designs, it feels like every location is unique in its own world that lives beyond just the time we spend there with the cast, and it has some magic to it that Isekai does not replicate in any capacity. Imagine a world where we could have hundreds of thousands of actually good Isekai with unique main characters, unique stories, unique plot lines, and with there clearly being an unlimited amount of interest in the genre, with the proper writer, the stories could reach a whole nother level, and a hit sure. Isekai with a crazy premise with a studio like Wit, Bones, or Mappa behind them, you're looking at something that could take over the entire industry so what's your favorite isekai and if you enjoyed this video check out this yeah he, he said a lot of good points he said a lot of good points and i agree and here's the sad thing though right here's a sad thing the problem is that his points are correct and again the point being correct is there's so much possibilities there's infinite amount of things you can do in an isekai you have limitless potential so much world building rich cultures you can you know flesh out and have amazing character world build and uh, storytelling too. But at the same time, 
because of the nature of the isekai and how they can get away without doing any of that. And it's a quick cash grab, same to a lot of these amateur writers getting into the isekai niche. It's also that too. So in a sense, it's like the reason that isekai is bad is because of the potential of it could be good. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Please go give Mr. Kish, it's Kish, a like on the video. Go check his channel out, guys. There's a lot of videos that we could probably watch later too. That was a, that was a lot of good points to you know speaking of. Holy shit, this is a one hour fucking reaction. This is a 14 minute video. Enough yapping for me.